and welcome to Citizens Forum. This one's being filmed on Wednesday, August the 21st. Uh, the first part of Citizens Forum is always the Walter and Jack show, and, uh, and away we go. So, Walter, I'm going to start off with uh, Bradley Manning. Today, Bradley Manning um, was sentenced by the, all I can say is the corrupt, lying murderers who run the U.S. government. He was sentenced to 35 years in prison for, I mean, I'm not sure what he did or didn't do, but I think he released a lot of secret information to the American people that the power structure of the American government has always wanted kept. He's been tortured. He's already been in jail for a couple of years, and now he's sentenced to 35 years in prison. He was the one, I'm sure many people know this, who released the video of um, the helicopter over Baghdad um, where they there were a bunch of people on the ground and they just gunned them down. Wasn't that a drone attack? No, it was a helicopter. Okay. It was a helicopter. They were flying over the city. They saw a bunch of people doing nothing, but they were kind of, I mean, I think a lot of people felt it was just outright murder, yeah. um, which is what I thought it was. And uh, he released that, as well as thousands of other things. And 35 years in prison, uh, like, and they feel they have the morality to do that. Well, you know, the, the United States is, always sees himself as constantly under attack. Everything, everything that they do, all the aggression around the world is to thwart an attack on themselves. And yes. that's their view of things. Everybody is a potential enemy. Uh, everything has to be controlled. That's how they portray it. They yeah. know the truth, that they are the ones who are doing it to everybody around the world. But yeah. the story they feed us is that we're yeah. always being attacked. It's a kind of a necessary posture that they have that's worked quite well for them, by the way. For decades. Uh, you know, uh, it's, it's kept enough people convinced not to have an outright revolution. I mean, there's a lot of disaffected Americans, a lot of Americans that are, you know, really, really sort of given up on the country. But uh, they're still able to maintain the illusion of control and the illusion that they have a plan and that they're protecting U.S. citizens from this global terrorism and all. And, you know, in the past, if, if you and I would talk like this, people would say, well, that's anti-American. But it's got nothing to do with the American people. No. We're not anti-American people because the American people have absolutely no control over what their government is doing. Their yeah. government is totally out of control. In my opinion, it just works for the world's biggest corporations. They are the ones who elected Obama. They are the ones who control the Senate. They are the ones who control the Congress. They are the ones who own the media. And it's one big play to keep telling the American people that, hey, you know, it's, it's all about you. Yeah, I, you know, I think this is a trend that we're going to see in the future. I think yeah, more and more people will, will step forward with information pertaining to... I guess that's why Manning got 35 years. They're trying to thwart that from happening. Quite obvious that they're very vulnerable in that area. But, you know, in the end... As long as the mainstream media can portray events like this, and it's not really, they don't really condemn the United States for doing it, if CBC and such, who should really be coming into the defense of, of people like this, who are really uh, the modern day heroes and the, the bravest people to take on these, these entities. And when we have, for instance, I mean, I, I'm often hard on different people and different outlet, news outlets, but the CBC you do hold up slightly above the others and you think well they don't have quite the same amount of pressures on them and often they are fair but on incidents like this in international affairs the cbc just parrots the uh the corporate view of of the events and never and and reports them as fact and it's a it's just pure propaganda yeah i'll just read what was on cbc.ca uh it it it, it talked about Manning being uh, put in prison, it said he leaked video of a 2007 helicopter attack in Baghdad that mistakenly killed at least nine people. Well, if you watch the video, you know, you really, you know, it's not a mistake. It if you, if you listen mistake. to the audio, from what I remember, they're saying we're not sure what, who these people are, what they're doing, and their controller saying, yeah, go ahead, shoot. 
So it's not a mistake. They did it on purpose. They killed these people on purpose. I saw uh, a Marine who's left the, the military. Um, he said, he was speaking just to a group of vets, and he said uh, they were encouraged to kill people wantonly over there. And he said in his platoon or his group, um, the commanding officer said that the first soldier who kills somebody, not with a gun, but kills him with a knife, goes out and kills somebody with a knife, will get a three-day pass. I mean, this is the kind of insanity that the U.S. military and the U.S. government is putting out. Just the last thing on that issue, there was a story in the Times columnist today, Wednesday, not on the front page, but on the back page uh, of the first section. A tremendously important story. It should be front page news everywhere in Canada and the United States. It said CIA's role in Iran coup detailed. And this is like finally the official admission that in 1953, the CIA and I believe British forces as well went in and overthrew the democratically elected president or prime minister of Iran because he wanted to take Iranian oil and use it for the benefit of the Iranian people. So he was overthrown, kicked out of the country, and the United States put the Shah of Iran, they put essentially a king in, in place of a democratically elected leader. And they've been doing the same thing ever since and before. So let's just face the facts. This is what the United States really is. Not the United States people. They're lied to all the time about everything but the corporations and politicians who run the country. And of course, uh, Ayatollah Khomeini took over in 1979 and all that. And you know, he waited for three years in Paris for his chance to go back to Iran. And you really have to wonder what kind of revolution was that really? Particularly when the Iranian people really, really were crying out for a, a secular government and for a, a modern government. And uh, you know, the United States wouldn't allow that to happen. They were quite happy to install the Ayatollah in there and call that a revolution of sorts. The next enemy. You wanted to talk a little bit about a more local issue. Well, uh, we're back on the uh, PowerX BC Hydro story. Okay, PowerX. Uh, uh, well, PowerX is a um, is the export wing of BC Hydro. They're the folks that sell power to, to uh, the Americans and such. And uh, they were involved in, a, in really a, a scam back about 10 years ago in which they collaborated with Enron and other power suppliers to manipulate the markets, to create fake shortages, to inflate the prices, sometimes by hundreds and hundreds of times, and then sell that power to the unfortunate customers. In this case, it was the state of California which, you know, is just almost as big as Canada for uh, The people for of California just got... And uh, the government of California sued these, these companies. They were found guilty in court, by the way. If you read the verdict, you read the case, it's a blatant, blatant manipulation of the markets. It's nothing to do with uh, that uh, the deregulation of energy allowed this environment and therefore it was fair. No, this is corrupt business practices. This is predatorial. It was uh, found, they were found guilty, PowerX is guilty in court. Uh, but the strange thing about all that is, is uh, we have John Horgan, uh, the NDP energy critic, stepping up and saying, oh, we shouldn't be paying that back because we didn't do anything wrong. And that's what's so troubling is, uh, who's kidding who here? Who's telling John Horgan to say that line? I don't believe he could believe that if he actually looked into this. It's a blatant, it was a blatant crime. They were gouging the Californians and they finally, the California government finally got them back. So it's very troubling, A, that that happened. By the way, they're still at it. PowerX is still around, still doing lots of stuff. And you have what would be, what you'd think would be the critic would come forward and say something that's truthful about it. And it, it just isn't happening. And the, this is another indication of uh, what we have is this NDP liberal coalition government running the show right now. The corporations have free run here in British Columbia now with the setup that they have. 
Yeah, I, I like that comment that it's uh, an ND or a liberal NDP coalition government yeah. because it seems to be that on on all the important issues uh, they seem to agree, and all the important issues are whatever corporate British Columbia wants. Well, you know, <laughs> Power X. Of course, the history of Power X is that. Uh, and the and their their relationship with Enron, it isn't just like a one-off little incident here. You know, Enron soon after all this happened, split apart. One half of the company or part of the company became uh, a, co a company by the name of um, of Accenture. Oh no, you're thinking of Arthur Anderson, the accountants. That that's right. That oh yeah, but uh, sorry, yeah, the brain, the brains behind the Enron scam right. was Arthur Anderson. Sorry about that. And of course, that company split up when this started all happening. Part of that company uh, became Accenture, which is basically a, a massive public relations firm. And they came to British Columbia and took over BC Hydro. Now, when you say took over BC Hydro, so Accenture, which was yeah. an offshoot of Arthur Anderson, and Arthur Anderson worked with Enron, I guess, like this. Um, so when you say Accenture came to British Columbia and took over BC Hydro, what does that mean? Well, the Liberal government, about 10 years ago or so, uh, allowed uh, to the, the company basically just be split apart. And about a third of the company, which is the administration wing of the company, uh, the, a contract was given out to Accenture to run that port part of the company. But basically, when you're like, if you're if, if you're running that, you're running the brains of the company. You're setting all the directions. You're making all the policy decisions. You're basically running the corporation. And uh, basically, what Accenture is is a public relations firm. Now they hire another 150 public relations firms to handle their, their business. Now, they're also supplying information to the, the British Columbia government, who also have around 150 public relations firms, and the NDP with their own brand of public relations. So what are we hearing in the news about PowerX? This is why you hear the sort of nonsense that John Well, Hort I don't is know what we're about. hearing about PowerX, but BC Hydro itself has allowed itself and us because we are essentially yeah. the owners and the ratepayers of BC Hydro we are on the hook for about 50 billion dollars in long-term purchase contracts with private power producers all over the province that are getting energy electricity from That's destroying right. our rivers and we've signed BC Hydro has signed contracts with them worth about 50 billion dollars um, which we can't get out of, and we can't sell. We can't sell the electricity at anywhere near the price we're buying it at. So hydro is sort of circling the drain. They may be planning to bankrupt it, and uh, we are on the hook for billions of dollars. Yeah, that's all the same crowd, Jack. They're, the you know the California government didn't put up with it. They they took uh, Power X to court and won. And we have to face that. As British Columbians, we should look at our, what these fellows are doing. Their business practices are predatorial, you know, and in my view, they're corrupt. They're not fair. That doesn't represent the values of British Columbia. Uh, and, and all the issues around how, how BC Hydro is being operated also simply doesn't represent the values of, 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 uh, of the citizens of this country. So the next thing I wanted to talk about was this question, are the corporations trying to destroy our economy, our society, and our planet? And I mean, I think the corporations run the government of BC. We've yeah. just been talking about BC Hydro. Yeah. We can see now that BC Hydro and our entire economy is not being run for the benefit of the people of Canada or the people of British Columbia. We're not even in the picture. It's being run for the benefit of the one-tenth of one percent yeah. who, who run the country and run the world. In terms of our, of our society, um, we're seeing that same attack by the people who run the country. And again, it's not us. It should be us. We citizens should set the directions, but we don't. We're seeing the, the gap between rich and poor become ever greater in this country. And there is nothing more important to 
what a society is, then that gap between rich and poor, it has an impact on health, it has an impact on education, it has an impact on virtually every issue that's of importance to a society. If, if the income gap is like this, it's better, and if it's like this, it's worse, and that's where they're, they're taking us. Um, you know, the, the war on drugs, again, the damage the war on drugs has done, especially to American society, but here in yeah. Canada as well, we're funding huge drug gangs. There's ongoing murders in Vancouver because of it. Yeah. You know, it entire nations are being destabilized. And who's behind the war on drugs? Is it the people of Canada, the people of the United States, or is it just part of this corporate plan to, and then of course the planet, you know, what do we have to say? Of course they're destroying the planet. There's no question. There's a lot of imbalance. You know, the corporations and invention of wealthy people on limit their liability and the actions they do. And, and the, so, I mean, it is just uh, corporations is, is a tool that the elites use to buffer themselves from the, you know, the outcome of their, of their business practices. <laughs> so and also the corporation never dies. It goes no. on and on and on. and never really goes to jail. You know, no. Uh, no matter what it does, including, you know, murder, uh, poisoning, uh, destruction, fraud, it never goes to jail. It never it just like maybe on. defrauding the California government for seven hundred and fifty million dollars, which they have to pay back. Or the That's Ford a corporation. Or the Ford Pinto, where a decision was yeah. made <laughs> uh, to allow people to burn to death in automobile accidents because that was cheaper than fixing the car. This is going back twenty years. Yeah. I mean, so, you know, those are the kinds of things that we citizens have got to deal with. We've got to retake control of our country, and uh, the only way I can see of doing that is, uh, is pushing for more democracy and pushing to create a media that will tell us the truth about what's going on. We yeah. have to know what's going on. You know, I had a, I was just talking to a friend the other day, and you know, was a, still talking about the election, of course. And they had voted a certain way uh, in the booth. They had voted for the NDP, and the fellow said, as soon as I checked checked the NDP candidate's name, I felt remorse. <laughs> and then we were laughing, and he said, and we came up with the term. It's the post-vote uh, traumatic distress. Tra uh, what do you call that? Traumatic distress disorder. Yeah. Like. People, a lot of people voted for the NDP just because they thought they have to be better than the Liberals. But they knew in their heart it wasn't true. And that was right. And a lot of people who stayed away from the polls, I think, did so because they knew the game, that this, this party does, did not represent anything substantially different. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, retaking control of the political parties, or at least making sure the political parties operate yeah. fairly, honestly, and democratically. Yeah, is is very important. Um, well, there's a lot of good people around in, in these yes. parties, and they have a lot of great values. They just shouldn't let they shouldn't be cowed by the elites and the parties that the, and these spin doctors and these gurus and wizards that come up with all these brilliant strategies and why they have to do one thing or the other, and basically not tell the truth is what they're telling you. They have to spin everything. That we just have to get rid of that crowd. We should be playing this much straighter. The public should know these issues more clearly, and their own political party should be telling them the truth about these issues. I think a great idea would be a citizens' assembly on political parties. Bring yeah. together a group of citizens, maybe 50 to 100 citizens from around the province. Give them a budget. Give them some time. Give them, give them uh, the ability to hear experts speaking from right. all. Let them have a way of conversing with the general public. Take a look at the political parties and, and tell us, yeah. how can we make the parties work for us? Because yeah. if we could do that one thing, even if we learned about what we can do, even if we don't do it, just so we know. Oh yeah, and the grassroots has to get active again. They have to start standing up and not relying on these so-called experts. And we've got to focus our energies on, I think, not the issues, yeah. But getting control of our country, getting political control of our country back into our hands yeah. so that the decisions reflect what we want. Yeah. If that happens, I think we will start going in better directions from A to Z. I agree. Uh, 
Oh, there, there, was, uh, there was a good show on CFAX radio today, uh, CFAX uh, 1070 AM. Um, Ian Jessup, from 1 o'clock to 3 o'clock, he's on, I think, from Monday to Friday. The rest of the station makes me <laughs> very leery, but that show, I mean, he's the one guy in the corporate media anywhere who stands up and says, you know, fracking is terrible, it's a disgrace, yeah. that kind of thing. I mean, you just don't hear that anywhere. And on many other issues as well, he's well, good. good for him. I mean, fracking is like, the whole liquefied natural gas plan and how it's going to save BC economy is based upon fracking, which is an environmental catastrophe. So, you're di you know, how you're getting the, the gas out of the ground is already am unbelievably damaging and then it, when it gets on top of the ground you're shipping it and then the whole economics behind it it is it is really a, a disaster that's based upon a catastrophe an economic disaster based upon an environmental catastrophe that's that's a liberal government's plan for our future <laughs> yeah. yeah but we can't have jobs without it we can have we can have what we want we just yeah. have to uh, just take control back. Yeah. Walter, we've got one minute left. You wanted to talk about a class action suit. Well, I just did it just this afternoon. I joined a class action lawsuit um, against Aeroplan because Aeroplan is the, you know, the travel miles people that were supposed to let us go on our holidays and uh, have these great flights and all that. Well, they just took all my points away, 217,000 points, which represents like uh, eight and a half round trips to to, uh, to uh, New Brunswick, where I'm from, oh. just to give an example of how much I've lost here. Now, uh, but there are a group of people fighting uh, Aeroplan for basically predatory business practices. It's quite blatantly clear that they're trying to get away with something pretty awful. And uh, so that's my only recourse. No holidays for Walter unless I get my points back. Okay, watch out, Aeroplan, Walter's <laughs> after you. Thank you, Walter, for doing this. No problem. Thanks for watching this segment of Citizens Forum.